Salam, Shalom, Hotep, and peace be on to everyone out in the listening audience. My name is Dr. Fahim Judah L, and I'm glad to be with you this evening for another lecture class on the symbols of ancient Kemet in our mysteries, our mystery system. And we're going to talk today about the pre-dawn Neteru. The pre-dawn Neteru starts with noon, also called new or nine. This noon represents the unpolarized state of matter, the unpolarized state of matter. When we look in the ancient Kemetic creation text, it begins with the same basic concept that before the beginning of things, there was a liquidy primeval abyss, a liquidy primeval abyss. And later on, I'll talk to you about when we talk, start talking about human form, I'll talk to you about the Abyssinians, the Abyssinians. This was the name before the Ethiopians, before Ethiopia, the Greek word Ethiopia. They were called Abyssinians from the abyss, those who came from the abyss. All right, so this liquidy primeval abyss was everywhere, endless, without boundaries or direction. In ancient Kemet, we call this the cosmic ocean or the watery chaos, the noon. And when you, you see in most scientific journals today, scientists agree that in ancient Kemet, in the ancient Kemetic description of the origin of the universe, that it was a great abyss. All right? They refer to this abyss as neutron soup. Neutron soup. This is where there's neither electrons nor protons, only neutrons. And these neutrons are forming one huge, extremely dense nucleus, a nuclei. Okay? This was what we call the noon. All right? When we look at that, we see chaos. Chaos. And in this chaos, this chaos is this pre creation state. And it was caused by compressed, the compression of matter. Atoms that did not exist in their normal state. These atoms were squeezed so closely together that many atomic nuclei were crowded into a space that was previously occupied by a normal atom. If you have, you, you start to squeeze these atoms together, then you have a nuclei that is crowded in a space that was uh, occupied by a single normal atom. Now, when this happens, under these types of conditions, what happens? The electrons of these atoms are squeezed out. And when they're squeezed out of their orbits and they move around freely, we, we call this a degenerative state. It becomes a degenerative state, all right? So what happens? Physically, noon, represents the watery abyss, the primeval chaos, the ground state of matter from which creation arises. Now, everything was inert, not active, and as these nuclei were squeezed in and pressed together in the space of where a normal, normal atom is, then now you get this pressure that's built up and when we look at this metaphysically what do we what does noon represent noon represents the subjective being the symbol of the unformed the unidentified the undefined matter or energy inert or inactive the uncreated state before creation but it's that state that is now building 
for creation. All right? This is the noon, the place of all potentiality. And then when the, the utterance of Ra or the, the, the through Tahuti, now things begin to take place. And I'll show you this, but this is that place that even in the human being, so when we see it in human terms, noon represents in man, in us, the state of unconsciousness. We're not conscious. So we move to that unconscious state called the noon. And as I said earlier in other lectures, then we move into an area where we become a tomb or self-realization. Now we realize I am, I'm conscious. But let me go back because I don't want to go too far ahead. All right. So in human terms, the noon represents that state of unconsciousness, like being asleep. Okay. In our mental powers, our mental powers are there. But they're just in a chaotic state. So we're in a state of noon. And most human beings, at some point, you're in a state of noon. It represents the person's potential. But it's not active. It's inert. And it re needs to be recognized, sorted out, and utilized. Okay? It needs to be recognized first, sorted out, and then utilized. So that's the potential. And the potential in man is, is limitless. It comes from a place that is not that is not active, but it is a reserve. It is a place that is there, that is inert, that you can tap into and awake. Awakening, uh, consciousness will take place. <clears throat> All right. So now let's look at the four pairs from the city of eight, city of Tahuti. Uh, the number eight is called Agdad, the Agdad. And this is the four pairs. In the comedic text, it states that the noon is the pre-creation chaos. The pre-creation. And in the Bible we read uh, where God creates the heavens and the earth, and the earth is void without form. Okay. So what is what is the four pairs? The four pairs it possesses the characteristics that are identify with four pairs of primordial powers or uh, primordial forces all right each pair represents a primeval dual gender twin the masculine and the feminine aspect the four pairs are equivalent to the four forces of the universe the strong nuclear force the weak nuclear force gravity and electromagnetism those are your four those are your four pairs that are equivalent to the four forces of the universe the strong nuclear force the weak nuclear force gravity and electromagnetism the manifestation of creation in what we call eight terms or Agdad or Agdad all right this is expressed in all comedic cosmological centers. All right. If you go to Menefer, you'll see Ta in his eight forms created who created the universe. When you go to Heliopolis uh, or Anu, you'll see Atum created the eight divine beings. Atum and the eight beings are known as the Grand Enyat, the Supreme Nine. So you'll see that when you go to um, uh, uh, Ta'apet or Thieves, Luxor, you'll see Amon created the Agda. You'll see in Hermopolis, you'll see Hanun, the eight prime primeval uh, Neteru. You'll see the Agda represented the primeval state of the universe, the four dual gender twins. All right, so now I'm going to get into these four. Uh, uh, dual gender twins. So I want you. To, I'm going to give you the name, what they represent, and the symbols, right? And the first of the four is the noon. Like I said, the noon, that inert place, that place of chaos, the potential, unformed, that unawakening state, but but has potential. Noon. And the 
feminine side or I'll put the masculine strong uh, nuclear and then the, the uh, weak nuclear or the positive and negative or masculine feminine you can put it either way you want noon and its counter is nunet and it represents primeval waters the symbols are frogs and snakes he and hehet which represents infinite or the infinity of space kek and keket represents darkness and all of these symbol frogs and snakes and I'll get into what the frogs and snakes represent and Ammon and Ammonet Ammon and Ammonet Ammon and Ammonet represent invisibility Ammon the invisible one okay so let me recap this and go back over it again the four dual gender twins are Noon and Nunet He and Hehet Kek and Keket Ammon and Ammonet Noon and Nunet represents primeval waters. He and Hehet represents infinity of space. Kek and Keket represents darkness. And Ammon and Ammonet represents invisibility. This is the structure. This is the process that the, that the creator of all things used to create. All right. The four males. Let's look at this part. What does the four males represent? The four males of the pairs are represented as frogs. The four females of the pairs are represented as snakes or serpents. The eight beings are depicted with their legs tied. And I talked about that in another lecture, what that meant. And I'm going to say this again. It indicates that their essential nature as being active okay as being active the eight beings are depicted with their legs tied this indicates that their essential nature is being active but while in the subjective realm the noon before creation they are inert okay having their legs tied represents potential energies all right the female choice of the serpent is also significant when we look at this, the serpent, the serpent has been been uh, vilified in the in, in the scripture in the Bible, but in ancient Kemet we saw it as a symbol of power, a symbol of knowledge and wisdom, and even in the Bible Moses he took his rod and threw it down on the ground, uh, symbolizing the, and it turned into a, a serpent, symbolizing that female energy that female power in the universe okay and as the story goes you know Pharaoh has his uh, his magician throw down two rods and the two rods turn into serpent Moses throws his rod down and his rod turns into a serpent and eats up the two rods okay and then you'll see that power of Tehuti that spoken word within that whole story there all right but this is why we use the serpent the serpent is the choice for the female energy in the universe the female choice of the serpent is very significant the serpent is a metaphor for the spiral of life when you look on the <clears throat> a baby is born and on the top of his head he's got a green spot but his hair starts to come in you'll see at the very top you'll see that spiraling the hair spirals from the center from nothing and it starts to move in a circular pattern a circular pattern that's from the top of his head and that soft spot right there begins to harden as the child uh, grows later it's, it's usually green and I'll get into that later but from that spiraling out it starts from that specific point and it comes uh, to a point where everything grows out growing creation is growing the sun had started out as a dot and it grew to what it is now so 
everything when we create we grow things all right so that's what the serpent the tail on that serpent that coil that that coiling up bringing or spiraling down of life is the is the metaphor for the spiral in the hieroglyphs we'll see that this symbol is used to represent the netter the goddess okay the goddess aspect the netter the female as the female aspect the netter represents the active potent power in the universe that's the female how beautiful and how powerful the woman is how powerful that female energy is okay now let's look at frogs this is the male symbol why the frog the male frog are extremely prolific okay frogs are seen in vast numbers just before the annual flooding of the Nile which represents life when we look in the Bible we'll see that they called it a curse but frogs were coming out the sky frogs coming out the sky that vast number that prolific number okay many a whole lot all right symbolizing the coming up from the the frog symbolizes also uh, a new life because at one point the frog is a tadpole and he he sheds that tail and he gains leg and he has a new life as he crawls out of the water and walks up on dry land but in his dual nature he has the ability to go back into that water but he also has the ability to live on dry land but he makes that transformation by losing the tail and now moving onto dry land just like the baby does when the baby is underwater in the uh the sack of the mother and makes that transformation from breathing underwater and now the water's flushed out and the baby comes out and the baby has a new life okay so that's what the frog represents and that's why the frog is used okay now in this pre-dawning or this pre-creative uh, state we have to look at first Ammon Ammon is the hidden force what does Ammon represent Ammon which means literally hidden Ammon Amen, Amen, and this is the reason that that you can take Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and at every prayer, at the end of the prayer, all of these lesser mystery schools are going to use the word praise for Amen, and they're going to say Amen, Amen, or Amin. Okay, that's giving praise to the hidden one okay the one who is unseen the unseen God okay so for us in the comedic Ammon which means hidden represents the hidden force underlining creation the hidden force underlining creation Ammon represents the spirit that animates the universe the spirit that animates the universe and not only the universe, but all its components and creatures within it. Even though Ammon, the hidden one, is really undefinable himself, Ammon is the reason why we can define the universe. All right? The hidden force Ammon is only represented when it is animating. Okay? When it is animating. When it animates. The aspects of the universe. Watch this. I'm going to show you something here. And I talked about this in another lecture. Ammon is associated with Ra, Menu, Ta, as well as the Agdad. Ammon is associated with Ra, Menu, Min, Ta, as well as the Agdad. When Ammon is combined with Ra, as Ammon Ra, the joined force represents the animated power of creation. Ammon is also associated with the trinity of Ammon, Mut, and Hansu. Ammon, Mut, and Hansu. Okay. In Christianity, we see Ammon as the father, Mut as the mother, and Hansu as the Holy Spirit.